Welcome back everyone to part five of this Guts and Glory save with our starting club Welling United. Uh, today we've got for you the FA Cup fourth qualifying round replay at home to Barnet, which is uh, sure to be a test. And then we've got Maidstone United, who are a team relegated from the National League last season, so they're sure to be a challenge. Uh, but first we have the, uh, we're actually in the hat for the FA Cup first round draw. So let's get into that, shall we? And here you have it, the draw for the FA, uh, the Emirates FA Cup first round is made today. And this is when the League One teams come in. So if we manage to get through the tie against Barnet, we may well just have a bit of a money spinner waiting for us. Well, let's not delay any longer. Let's go and have a look and see who we end up with. So the teams we're, we're looking for, really, we want, we want a derby away. Uh, who else have we got here? Who else has got a big old statement? Brave Bradford away might not be bad. They uh, do tend to pack out, what, an 18, 19,000 uh, seater stadium. Uh, who else? There's other big League One teams in there that we wouldn't mind having a crack at. Peterborough uh, might fill the coppers a bit reading. They've got a big old stadium as well, haven't they? Um, even Wrexham would probably do, uh, but ideally want something like 15,000 fans plus to try and uh, fill the coffers a bit because we are a poor little National League South team. We need the money from this kind of run. So let's have a look and see, I mean, see who we end up with. But beyond that, if we can't get hold of one of those ties, we want a tie we can win at home. Uh, so let's get started, shall we? Yeovil Town, no thank you. We'll, uh, we'll, we'd like to skip that. Brilliant. Gillingham Hall. Oh, now that that's a tie. That's the team I support. That would be quite the quite the first round tie. Uh, but they're going to play Harrogate Town instead. Uh, we don't really want that one. Thank you. Yep. Happy for Northampton to take that on. Stockport County. Probably not a huge amount of money in that one. And Aldershot Town are fortunate enough to end up with that one. Uh, we've got Crew Oxford, fine, happy to skip those. This this is the one, this is the big tie that we'd love to have. And it's Portsmouth who get that instead. They're not going to benefit from it, just let us have Reading. Uh, Swindon, I don't think there's much in that for us. And that's Hampton, Richmond, Torquay. Altrincham, no, that's fine. Obviously Wimbledon, I don't think there's much there for us either. Uh, Bromley, I mean, they, they just beat us and it would be embarrassing. Uh, Hartlepool, yeah, fine. Okay, we're, we're, we're skipping a lot of these uh, these ties that we don't really want. But we want Derby. That's I think that's the one probably left. Derby or Bradford, perhaps, as the bigger teams. But let's see. Let's keep going. Rochdale, Blythe, Spartans. They've got Fleetwood. Yeah, okay, we're happy to skip Walsall. MK Dons, big stadium, no fans. Okay, brilliant. Derby, now this 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 would be fantastic. This would be FM24 throwing us a bone if they give us this tie. And, oh, I mean, what a waste. Tombridge Angels, come on. Of course, well, Woking might win that one. Uh, so, Wickham, maybe not a bad one, but we've not got that Bradford. Now, Bradford is the probably the last big stadium team in there. I know they're in League 2. But in terms of attendance, that, that's plenty of money coming through the door. So are you not? You're not going to give it to us. OK, fine. Uh, so in that case, we're probably down to one. Oh, Charlton would have been a good one as well. I miss Charlton. Um, OK, Port Vale away. No, thank you. Here we go. Right. So it's a home draw. Uh, who in here do we fancy we could beat? I mean, Boreham Wood, Brackley Town, potentially. Um, I mean, really, we want someone on a lower level than ourselves, or at least in the same league. Eastbourne, we gave a good hiding to. Hemel Hempstead, we've beaten this season. Uh, Weymouth wouldn't be a bad one. Well, there, there are options. There are options. Let's see what Football Manager does for us, shall we? Yeah, Burton Albion, well... That's both a match we're going to lose, even at home, and it's not going to bring us in a huge amount of money. But it is a match against the league side if we can get past Barnet. We've still got to do that bit first, haven't we? Uh, so let's skip to the end. We don't care about the rest of the teams. They can go and play whoever they're going to play. We only care about Welling. Right, 
there we are so we if we get through uh, against barnet we have where are we here we go we have a home tie against burst and albion to look forward to but we've got to go and win that replay first so we'll see you back for that so we are back it's nearly time for the uh for the, the replay tie uh but first thought i'd just show you the new signing we've made here so Zuriel Otse Taiwo, who has come on a free transfer, formerly of Southampton, um, now plays a right back. And we don't play a right back, but we do have a wing back system. And I noticed he's very good at the wing back role in, in a full back position, but somehow he's completely unable to play as a wing back. Um, well, not completely unable, but just very unable. He's ineffectual. Um, so we are training him up to play the wing back position in the hope that he can provide a bit of cover and possibly even competition uh, for TJ Bramble out there, who is uh, has gone on international duty a couple of times this season. So we definitely need a uh, competent right wing back to uh, to challenge and potentially just play as cover for him. So hoping that Otse Taiwo manages to. Uh, to pick up the position pretty quickly seeing as he knows the role he just doesn't, doesn't know how to do it apparently 10 yards further up the pitch um i mean that makes complete sense to me but we'll get him trained up and hopefully in the not too near not too distant future rather he will be ready for uh even a potentially a starting role but let's get into the team today uh, TJ Bramble has just come back from international duty, so he's going to sit this one out. He's not really even fit enough for the bench. So we're going with Winterbottom in goal, Dickinson holding and Brian War at the back, Green and Lima on the wings. Uh, Obiero's back after his suspension in the uh, in the first time. White and Flanagan in midfield and Abrahams and Torres keeping their partnership up front going. We have got Rosgrove waiting on the bench just in case Torres doesn't manage to... Uh, contribute anything Rosgrove kind of chomping at the bit I think to get back into that starting position uh, but Torres at the moment just feels like the better option he's he's played better you know he hasn't scored as many goals yet but he is playing better he seems to contribute more on Rosgrove Rosgrove felt like a reliability at times when whenever we had the ball uh, so let's get in to the match now we could do with I mean I'd love the win I'd love to get into the FA Cup proper here it's not essential um, I and mean, you know really it just ends up being more games but there's nothing quite like getting a non-league team into the fa cup proper and, and maybe maybe even getting through into sort of second and i mean if you're a bit the third round that's that's what it's about so here we go kick off for this fa cup replay um we are yeah we're playing the standard formation we're playing the 532 that's done us fairly well so far this season um we are kind of mid-table and i think we some of our performances have deserved a lot better we've uh, we've scored lots of goals but we concede so many despite having so many players playing defensively we just don't seem to be able to stop the opposition from scoring uh so as you can see we went to an attacking uh mentality in the last video because well it's it's I, th I think we're just going to play to our strengths we can't defend so why bother let's just outscore the opponents and so far that served us fairly well and i think we've just managed to score a goal off of a <laughs> off of a barnet defender torres with an, a pretty horrible shot really from uh, just a couple of yards out after lima put in a a teasing low ball for him and he's he's missed it so badly that it's hit the right back and it bounced into the goal um he absolutely wouldn't have expected that one to come at him let alone uh, end up putting it into his own net but we have taken the lead and we are one nil up in this tie and as it stands we've got we haven't got one foot in the the fa cup proper we've got maybe a, a small toe we've got a small toe in the fa cup proper and as Barnet looked like they were very dangerously counter-attacking there, holding comes to the rescue. And what a loan signing he's been. He's only had a couple of games, but he has been outstanding in them so far. Um, defensive performance was brilliant. I think in his last game, he actually managed to score a goal as well. So showing his worth at both ends of the pitch and in there now with an absolutely incredible block, just threw his body in front of the ball. 
But unfortunately, the rest of his teammates can't help him out. No one can get the ball clear. It was Barnet shirts all around, and they've just they've just got a, a too easy, really. Look at that. We've got three men there marking fresh air. Four men marking fresh air. While their what left winger just manages to nod the ball in. Well, Stead was their striker, so uh, yeah, not left winger, but still not great defending. And this is why we go attacking. There is no point us trying to uh, prevent the other team from scoring. We just need to go and score more than they do. That That's it. That's all we can do. I'm looking forward to a summer where we probably cancel most contracts. We'll probably release a lot of these players on a free and rebuild the squad. And, oh, I mean, I'm, I'm glad this man is staying. Tristan Abrahams. I mean, what a strike that is. Doing pressing forward duties to the absolute letter there. Making sure that no Barnet player had a chance to sit on the ball. Intercepts the header there from the centre-back. Charges the edge of the box and smashes one low past Walker. And we are 2-1 up at home in this tie. This is oh, it's, it's tantalisingly close. You can feel it. We are nearly there. Let's go for more in the, in the second half, shall we? There's, we? We can't sit back. We know we can't defend, so there's no point sitting back. Let's go back for another goal. Let's see if we can do another one. The most we will do, and we'll probably do that in about 10 minutes if we're still 2-1 up, we might go back to positive. Just to make sure uh, we don't throw too many bodies forward. Uh, my assistant thinks we should sub the uh, goalkeeper off because of a bruised hand, but he is having a bubble. Uh, we've only got three substitutions available to us. I'm not wasting one on a, an injury that, I mean, doesn't even seem to affect his fitness at all. Okay, so what have we here? Okay, so it's a welling free kick. Flanagan stands over it. We've got bodies in the box, but he's going straight for goal, and it really wasn't all that close in the end. That's one thing we do miss is a, is a, a set piece taker, someone who can score goals from free kicks. Um, but I just don't think we've got that in the side. Right, Lima is tired. And, I mean, my assistant is suggesting James Vaughan is the man to come and play that. I mean, I don't think he can. I think he's just going to have to see it out. Uh, but we will change Flanagan and bring on Odesanya. Uh, Odesanya. Actually, Odesanya is quite good as a Mizala. He does, he does like to get forward, and he's scored a couple of goals for us this season. So we'll bring him on. And Torres hasn't done badly um, and obviously was key in that first goal. But we are going to give Roscoe a chance to uh, to show his worth. I've been very harsh on him, so I'm going to give him one, not one last chance. We've many chances, I'm sure. But we're going to give him a chance to uh, uh, get himself back into our good books and maybe even the starting 11 as Winterbottom comes out and collects that very, very comfortably. And then for some reason just boots it nowhere. Um, distribution, not the strong point for National League South goalkeepers, I would say. And Lima, despite running on empty, is everywhere. He's charging down that right flank and plays the ball to Roscoe. Roscoe with a good ball into Abrahams and it's 3-1. Oh, well, Roscoe, welcome back to the first 11, my boy. That's uh, That's exactly what we wanted to see. I mean, Lima just commanding that right flank for us. Good ball into Roscoe, and it's great vision and a perfect finish from Abraham, smashing that into the top corner. And we are 3 1 up. This this is the point now where we do go to a positive mentality. This is my this is my version of defensive with Welling United. Uh, going to a positive mentality. And actually, we're gonna we're gonna waste some time. That's that we've got to, haven't we? We've got to try and take time out of the game because Barnet are a team that could quite easily punish us, I think. They're an entire division above us and uh, we can't we can't be complacent even though we've got this two-goal lead. And I think we are about to see this out. Excellent. Welling United are in to the FA Cup. I mean, that's that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And looking forward to, well, we've got a tie against Burton. It's not quite the uh, the magical FA Cup tie that you'd hope for. There it is. That's, uh, let's change that view so we can see. I'll fiddle around with the view so we can see attendances 
on here in a moment, but 2,400 for that home game. Our normal is less than 1,000, so that's not too bad. Uh, finances wise, 86,000 on gate receipts so far this month, which isn't too shabby at all. Uh, and hopefully we'll go some way to boosting the budget a bit. And we've made, well, I think we've probably made most of that off of one game. So it, although it's not been, uh, it, it's not the big glamour tire, we have done all right in terms of money. So maybe Burton coming to, to Parkview Road isn't the disaster I was worried about. But anyway, now let's not worry about that. That is a match for 4th of November. We're going to go and play Maidstone. We'll play the talkie game in between and then we'll see you back here for Tuesday night. Well, I think Winterbottom's time at the club is pretty much done. He is uh, He's only on, uh, on loan till the 1st of January anyway. But uh, the talkie game was pretty much the final nail in the coffin as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we were far the better side in pretty much the entirety of the match and somehow ended up conceding three when I think they had maybe three shots on target something like that uh or five shots on target they had an xg of 0.41 and yet somehow winterbottom has conceded three including one which was at his near post it was i mean he was at his near post and he still managed to concede it and i don't know how a goalkeeper manages to do that so uh we're probably saying goodbye to winterbottom we've already brought a few um players in a uh, few uh Free transfers on trials. I mean, he's there. He was standing there. The ball came pretty much straight at him and he manages to let it in. Uh, so, yeah, we have brought in a few uh, goalkeepers on trial just to see who the best fit is. But I'm pretty much done with Winterbottom. If Morgan wasn't such a an old man, he probably would be the option we go to. And I'm, I am toying with the idea of playing him in the next match not this one the one after and we are going to give Winterbottom one last chance but his average rating of 6.69 is probably a big contribution to where we are at the moment in terms of the number of goals we seem to concede but all of that aside we have a match against Maidstone to play uh, we do need to make some changes actually so I've not actually touch this have I what do you think yeah okay let's change some players um white looks tired so Adesanya can come in Bramble is a little bit tired so Lima can come in and Dickinson scored no goal in the last match so he can come and sit this one out I think um Rossgrove didn't put in a great performance but I'm gonna leave him in there for the time being Right, and that's the side we go with, I think. So we're going to go with Winterbottom in goal, Bird holding Brian Waugh across the back three, Green and Lima on the wings, Obiero holding in midfield, and then Odesanya and Flanagan finishing off that midfield with Abrahams and Roscoe up front. So let's go and see how we get on against Maidstone. I'm still bitter over that Torquay loss. We were the better side. Well, I'm recording this on OBS, and it's uh, crashed twice to me already. Uh, to me, on me. Uh, so I'm hoping we can get through the rest of this match unscathed. Uh, but anyway, we have kicked off against Maidstone and the first highlight is coming up with Maidstone nearly scoring a very easy goal. Uh, Winterbottom, as usual, just rooted to the spot, completely unable to move or do anything, any, any of the normal stuff that a goalkeeper might be expected to do, like uh, move and stop the ball going at the goal and things like that. Uh, so... He is, yeah, he's, he's done. He's done. He just doesn't doesn't do it for me at all. Um, but Maidstone now with the ball. I mean, it, Maidstone are one of the favourites to go straight back up into the National League. So uh, this isn't an easy match by any stretch. But given that we've uh, we managed to dispatch Barnet, I'd like to think that Maidstone are quite on our level. But we can give it a good old go. But we're a plucky upstart kind of team. Um, and having said that, the ball's been shot at goal, which means it's automatically a goal for the opposition. Uh, unless, of course, the linesman decides to intervene, which was uh, very timely. I am still very bitter about Winterbottom and his inability to, uh, to keep goal, as you can see. But anyway, moving on, Maidstone now have the ball and we just don't seem to be able to get anywhere near it. Uh, it's lumped forward and 
Obiero's giving away a penalty. Oh my god. Um well this this is turning into a disastrous evening so far. Um I, that wasn't a save. I nearly, nearly had to speak words of praise for Winterbottom, but in fact, the ball hit the post. Winterbottom had nothing to do with the fact that did not go in. That was completely down to the incompetence of their uh, striker. I assume it was a striker taking that. And Winterbottom remains praiseless for the night and for the season, I think. Uh, we've not seen any highlights of us going forward, which is a bit concerning. And there, there is the inevitable goal. It was coming. It's been coming all half. Uh, we are going to. We're going to berate the team because I'm very unhappy with how we've played so far. We've not created anything. We've been completely under the cosh. And while you might say that this is, you know, Maidstone demonstrating their title credentials or at least their promotion credentials at home, we've got to be taking advantage, and we've just completely failed to do that. Uh, we're going to tell them they're all rubbish which i think is completely true and i did upset a few players actually after the torquay game by saying it wasn't good enough um so yeah with the potential rebellion in the dressing room i think it was kieran flanagan who was the uh, the ringleader of it i think there's only two players so hopefully they'll all calm down sooner rather than later but uh well, we've uh, we've upset them once. We might as well upset them again by telling them they're rubbish. And somehow we have left someone completely free and clear. And Winterbottom, is, he just kneels. All he does there is kneel. He doesn't even attempt to go for the goal uh, for the ball. Even doesn't attempt to stop a goal. He just decides to kneel down. And I'm I'm flabbergasted. I mean, the, the defending at the the um, corner there is shocking. Anyway, but that that that's not goalkeeping no one can tell me that's goalkeeping um he is gone he is on his way out flanagan from distance and we've actually made the goalkeeper make a save which is i think the first time we've seen that in this match uh the corner from green it's going to be an in-swinger in towards the near post and doesn't beat the first man we do seem to desperately lack uh decent set piece takers and that's something we'll probably need to rectify sooner rather than later uh right we've got some tired legs out there already so zeko biero will have to come off and tj bramble can come on uh cameron can come off for dickinson dickinson can't play there can anyone play left wing back if not green is just going to have to green's going to have to man up and take it holding can come off for dickinson instead and Rosgrove is I mean, he's been rubbish again, but so is Abrahams. So we're going to bring on Lacan Torres, who will play as our poacher. And Rosgro will just have to be, I mean, he can be a target forward. Why not? That's, that's, he might be better at that. Who knows? We'll give him a chance. Uh, so it's, we're 2 0 down at home to Maidstone. I, I mean, there's nothing about what we've done so far that makes us think we've, we've got any chance of getting it back. We're going to demand some more from this team because they've been. Well, it's been they we've been below par in this match. I think the Torquay United game knocked the stuffing out of everyone, uh, and they're probably very untrusting of that man between the posts. Uh, Ross Groves smashes it at a defender, and I mean that's that's what counts as a highlight for Welling United tonight. Hey ho! Uh, right, so Brian War building from the back, Lima Flanagan now gets down outside the defender, gets the ball across, bobbles off the goalkeeper, and comes to pretty much nothing. And then Odesanya kind of swings his leg but really nothing going there um we we didn't do need to make a change but we've got nothing we can do there's no flexibility really within the side um unless we can play could we play that as a back four cameron potentially moving forward i mean could you play as a central midfielder perhaps not really. You want to play on the wing. Name have you got any? No, you've got no inclination to play there. Can any of you play as a defensive midfielder, perhaps? Just someone so we can go to a 4 4 2 diamond. No, none of them can do anything. Uh, so, right, we're just going to resort to uh, flapping our arms up and down on the touchline because I'm not sure what else to do with this squad. It's. Uh, it's paper thin as it as it is. We've we've a decent enough eleven, um, but when things are going wrong, there aren't many options for us. 
and that's something we'll need to look to rectify in the summer transfer window although um you know as there are no real transfer windows in national league south we'll we'll keep trying to make some uh, changes during the season season uh, season um which is easier said than done we've uh, we've not really found we've not got a great deal of budget anywhere and our scouts are struggling to to find the the right people to to bring into the club we've got a couple couple of people on trial but we just can't afford any of the options that are out there so it may well be back to looking for more free loans to um to bring in some some opportunities or some uh yes yeah, opportunities for for change and well that's that's gutting i mean i think we did all right in creating but defensively we just are so so weak and i'm putting it all on the goalkeeper absolutely all of it is going on the goalkeeper's head um he has conceded so many goals that shouldn't be goals and yeah well look we're talking about ross Crow's goal drought he also uh is his uh loan is up on the 1st of january and we are definitely not renewing that one that one is one that will let come to an end uh so that's tonight's today's episode i keep saying tonight it's because i record at night after work so i keep saying tonight if i'm saying tonight it's because it's night for me um right we aren't going to come back for we're going to come back for the for the FA Cup first round as long as we're in the FA Cup we're going to keep showing it uh, so I think we'll just do Burton and Dover um, so another Kent based side so uh, I mean we're getting further and further away from derbies every time we talk about these Kent teams uh, but we'll do Burton Albion and we'll do uh, Dover Ath Athletic uh, and then after that depending on how we get on in the FA Cup we could well come back for Dartford or we'll come round, come back for round two of the FA Cup, depending on how we get on against Burton. So if you have, if you have enjoyed that, please do leave a like, subscribe to the page, and we'll see you again next time.